everybody, I'm Katie. Welcome back to my kitchen. And today's recipe calls for indulging again. And this recipe was requested, highly requested, from my niece, my 12-year-old niece, niece who loves Harry Potter. So we're making a cake and what do you say? Let's start painting. Okay, let's see the ingredients so we can get started. We're going to need some uh, fresh Greek strained yogurt, a little bit of granulated sugar, a little bit of vanilla, eggs, this is cake flour, um, powdered cocoa powder, dark chocolate, a little bit of butter, and some vegetable oil. And of course, as we go along the way, I will show you a few more ingredients, but because I don't want you to get mixed up, we're, this is a four layer cake and we're going to start with the vanilla cake. Okay, let's get started. Okay, this is one of the ingredients that we're going to use towards the end of the recipe. Okay, you're going to need about a liter of heavy cream and you're going to add, everybody knows how to make whipped cream, right? A liter of heavy cream, two tablespoons or three, it depends on how sweet you like it, and you're going to whip it up, put it in your fridge because I want it nice and cold, okay? Let's get started with our batter. Okay, let's get started with our eggs in our vanilla batter. That's one. Two large eggs. Okay, this was a double egg, it doesn't matter. It's three, because they're smaller, okay? And now we're gonna put in our sugar. And we're gonna whisk it really well, and one of our vanillas. We're gonna beat this so it can be nice and uh, frothy. I want it to have a nice light yellow color. This way I, I know that my uh, sugar has been dissolved in the egg. Just give it a good beat. You can do it with a hand mix mixer, of course, but it's really easy. You can just use it with a, use a, a whisk for this right now. Okay, and now to this, I'm going to add three-fourths of vegetable oil. It's going to give it a really fluffy texture. And we're going to continue to beat. And like I said, I want a nice hot oven, 350 Fahrenheit, 180 Celsius. This cake is going to be baking for about 20 to 25 minutes according to your oven. Okay, my batter is exactly how I want it. And now... You're not going to use all of this yogurt because we're going to continue with the cocoa batter later. We're using half of it. And we'll combine. Start making this cake ahead of time because it's a great recipe for Halloween. Your children, if they love Harry Potter like everybody does, will absolutely love it. You can make it for them for their birthday. And you can also make it for their, your trick-or-treaters also. Okay, that's done. And now I'm adding in my flour. This is cake flour. Okay, that's why I'm not using any baking powder or baking soda. Everything is in here. I don't have to hassle. And well combined. Okay, now we're going to butter our pan. This way we're sure, this is a non-stick pan, but I always, I always want to be sure, so I just add a little bit of butter. Like that. 
And like I said, they're going to be baking for 20 to 25 minutes. And we're going to let them cool before we move on to the next step. Because they, unfortunately, we have a lot of steps in this cake recipe. Believe me, you will be amazed. Okay. Let me just clean my hands. And I'm just adding the butter. The batter. Like that. After this bakes and cools, we're going to divide the cake into two layers. Like I said, it's a four layer cake, our Harry Potter cake. And my niece uh, insisted that we name it Harry Potter's Secret Chamber. Okay, so that's the recipe for today. Now, we're just going to spread it through evenly. Make sure when you make layer cakes that the layers, the layers aren't very thick. It's terrible when I eat a cake and the layers are about an inch thick and I'm eating just cake and I can't taste the frosting. It has to be thin layers. They have to be thin layers. Like that, evenly, everywhere. Okay. Just give it a tap. And we're going to put this baby to bake for about 20 to 25 minutes. And once it's ready, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay, our cake has been baked perfectly, and this is what it looks like. We're going to let this cool for at least 25 to 30 minutes, and we're going to move on to our next step, which is the chocolate uh, batter, okay? Okay, since our vanilla batter and our cake is ready and it's cooling, let's move on to the second batter, which is the chocolate one. And to this, we're adding our eggs. Okay, this is a big one. I guess it's going to be two inside again, like I said. It's two small ones, so it's okay. And my sugar. And the vanilla. And we're repeating just like the first batter. Point, your oven is going to be still. Uh, it's going to be still on. Okay, you're not going to shut it off. So we're going to continue baking. And I'm adding in my yogurt. Well combined. Yes, this recipe is a little time consuming, but so, so worth it, every minute. Okay, and my vegetable oil, three-fourths of a cup. And now before I add my flour, at this point, I'm adding my cocoa powder. Make sure it's good quality cocoa powder so you can get the best aroma. <laughs> Smells wonderful. And always when we're using cake, uh, when we're making cakes, we don't over uh, work our flour. So we can get a nice fluffy cake. Okay, our batter is ready and we're going to butter our pan again. And same time goes for here, 20 to 25 minutes according to your oven. I think 23 minutes is perfection. Okay. 
Okay, clean my hands, my gloves actually, and we are ready to pour the batter. Beautiful velvety batter. Okay, and we're going to spread it around like that, just like before. It seems a lot thicker than the first batter, it's because of the cocoa powder. It absorbs all the uh, moisture. It actually looks like frosting. Okay. Like that. I'm going to put this baby to bake, and once the chocolate one is ready, we're going to see what it looks like. Okay, come up close so I can show you what we're, how we're going to make our chocolate sauce. I have about two tablespoons of butter, and to that I'm just adding about three tablespoons of milk. I'm going to let this simmer on my stove on high. I'm going to give it a good melt. I'm not adding the chocolate yet because if I do it at this point, if I add my chocolate now, I might have a very bad, bad uh, alternative because it might burn and there's nothing worse than burnt bitter chocolate. We're just going to let it simmer until the, the butter, butter melts and then we're going to add in the chocolate. Okay, the butter has melted completely and now I'm just adding in my chocolate. But at this point, I'm turning my stove off. We don't want it anymore. And our chocolate sauce is going to completely cool before we frost our cakes because this is going to go on top. We're going to have another filling in between the layers. I'll show you on the way. Along the way. Okay, our chocolate has melted completely. See how it looks? Beautiful, velvety, shiny because we have the butter inside. And now we're just going to let this cool completely. The cameraman is going to Clean this spoon, I'm sure. I'm going to cover it with the lid. And okay, now we're going to make a light custard because we're going to mix it together with our, uh, with our um, whipped cream. Okay, this way we're going to have a very rich, flavorable uh, filling on the inside of our cakes. And we're going to need three cups of uh, whole milk and we need about four tablespoons of corn flour and I'm going to add it to my one cup of cold milk. I'm going to dissolve this very well. This is a light custard, a classic custard. And to this I'm going to add two tablespoons of confection of granulated sugar. I'm sorry. We're going to give it a good stir. And it's going to dissolve on our stove, on high. We're going to wait for the milk to come to a simmer and we'll be back. Okay, nice and hot. And now I'm going to put in, pour in my mixture with the corn flour and the rest of the milk. And we're going to wait for this to thicken. 
Okay, our custard is absolutely perfect and it's ready. This is what we want. We don't want it thicker because then it's gonna look like soap. Okay, and we're gonna let this cool completely before we combine it with our um, whipped cream. Okay, we're almost done. Now that our cakes have cooled, we're gonna take them. And I want you to be very careful here. Nice clean surface. I'm putting my cake on my surface. And now with my knife, Okay, look what I'm doing now. I'm taking my knife and slowly, I'm not cutting it all the way through. Try to be nice and even. We're doing this so we can have two layers. Once you go all around your cake, I'll show you what the next step is going to be. Okay, now I'm taking my knife and I'm going to place it all the way through and repeat the process. that. Make sure your knife is pretty long. In length, I mean. Okay, let's see. Just a little bit more. And now I'm just like, I'm brushing it through. So we can have a nice thin layer. I think when you're going to start to handle your kicks, you'll understand what I mean if you're doing this for the first time. And it's almost released. And now I'm taking my cake. Okay, this one wasn't that perfect. It's okay. We're going to turn it over. If this happens, you're just going to take it over, flip it over, cut a piece because it is thick here, and just press it on top like that. So you can fill in the gaps. Okay, it's really forgivable. And that one there. Okay. Now, let's move on. I'm just gonna push them away a little bit. We're going to do the chocolate one now. Flip it over. The same goes for the chocolate one. You don't put it all the way through. And if you have a tart pan like mine, it'll be easier because you'll see uh, where you should, get, you should cut it. Okay. We cut our cakes in half. That means we have two uh, vanilla ones, two chocolate ones. And I want you to have three different size bowls and a uh, two different size bowls and a shot glass. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my shot glass in the middle. Come on. And gently, I'm gonna take out that little cake that's right inside and place it right there and repeat the process. Oops, put it on the side, doesn't matter. Believe me, it'll be fine. And now make sure it's in the center. And one more. It 
If it falls apart, don't worry, it's cake. You can pull it back together. Okay, the shot glass is finished. Now we're taking the medium sized bowl, putting it in the middle. And it's gonna look like a donut, right? And repeating the process. Oops, sorry. And now the chocolate. It's okay. with my knife I'm going to help it so I can be sure that it's going to be perfectly released. There. I think the chocolate one is okay. Okay. Now I'm taking the other bulb, which is a little bit, bit bigger. And I'm doing the same thing. Make sure that it's in the center and cut away. And again. You're probably thinking, what crazy idea is this? Well, you're going to have to be a little patient with me, and you'll see at the end. Okay. Now this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the first piece from the vanilla. You see that? And so I can replace the missing pieces. Okay, let's move this here. Make sure when you're placing them, they're next to each other. Bring it here, and now I'm picking up this one piece and placing it right where the other one is missing. Okay, you got that? And now, since it's vanilla and chocolate, we need the vanilla again. So I'm going to take this rim. No, wrong one. The middle one. Place it in front of the chocolate one. It's pretty easy. It's just, it just takes a lot of steps. This recipe will take you a lot of steps. It's fine. Okay, now I'm going to push it away. And what's missing from here? The chocolate one. Keep it close by. We're going to put that in. And there's one. Just going to press it down like that. And we're going to move on to the chocolate one. Because this is white, so we have to do the chocolate one now. And I'm taking the piece that's missing, put it in the middle. And now we need chocolate. So the next piece is the middle one. And like I said, don't worry if it falls apart, it's absolutely fine. Okay, and we're going to put the vanilla in the middle. That's the second one. And this one is calling. And where is my white one? Oh yeah, here it is. I'm going to put that in the middle. And whatever else is left. Press it down just a little bit, and now we need the rim, the middle rim.
like that. So now we're moving on to the chocolate. And how we're gonna move it now. <laughs> okay. Uh, bring that there. Push it away. And this one's missing. There. Isn't that interesting? This is a real, really interesting recipe. I broke my head because my niece was talking to me about Harry Potter and checkerboards and all that. And I said to her that, okay, it sounds like a great idea, but a lot of people have made checkerboards, so we have to do something different. Why don't we make a checkerboard cake? I said, how was I going to do that? So I didn't sleep one whole night thinking about it. And I think I got it. I got the answer. And that's it. So you have four, and this one goes in the middle. Okay. That's it. And we are ready. Okay, where should I put this one? This one's missing. We'll put it here. Okay. So you have four different circles. Okay, these cakes are ready to be uh, frosted now, so we're going to start filling them in the middle and layering them on our platter. Okay, it's ready now so we can place our frosting, okay, our whipped cream. So we're taking our cold whipped cream and we're going to place it right in here with our cream, the custard. Okay, and we're just going to whisk it all well combined, your custard with your whipped cream. That's the filling for our cakes, okay? Okay, I think it's okay. I'm going to get this out of the way, and now... We're going to start placing it on top. It doesn't have to be perfect because it doesn't show. And you're just going to spread it evenly throughout the cake. Okay, we're ready now for the last layer. Gently. Okay, that's it. That's the last piece. And now we are ready to put in the glaze on top. Okay, now we're ready to put in our glaze. A little at a time. And make sure your glaze, like I said in the beginning, that it's cold, okay? If it's not cold, you're going to have pancakes. And just spreading it all around. We're not finished yet because we need to make another little glaze, a white one this time, just a little bit of confectioner's sugar and a little bit of milk. we can do a magic trick on top of the cake. And the last of the glaze. Okay, that was the last of the glaze. And now, this is gonna go into your refrigerator, to your refrigerator, and we're gonna let this cool for about an hour. Okay, we're gonna make the white glaze that's gonna go on top. Just give it a good clean around the rim. Not the chocolate, don't take the chocolate off. You need that. Okay, we're gonna put this in the refrigerator and we're gonna get ready so I can show you the white glaze that's gonna go on top, okay? Okay, in this bowl 
now we're going to make the white icing that we're going to put on top of our cake, okay? I have about 10 to, to 15 tablespoons of uh, confectioner sugar. And to this, we're going to add some milk, a little at a time, not all at once, because we want to make a glaze. And then we're going to put it in a Ziploc bag so we can start making what we're going to make. I'm not going to tell you yet, but trust me, you will love it. See, it becomes like paste. That's what we want. We want it to be thick, not runny. I think we need a little bit more. And if it's runny, you're just going to add a little bit of confectioner sugar again. If it's too thick, you're going to add a little bit of uh, milk. Okay, I think that's the right consistency. Okay, I want it to, be, to look like this. Okay, and now we're ready to get our cake right out of the fridge. Now we're going to fill in our bag. Okay, just pull it like that. And now watch closely what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull a straight line from the top, hold on. All the way to the other end. Okay? And we're gonna repeat the process. Here. Across. And again, like that. Squeeze your bag so you can get all your mixture on the bottom. And now again. See this way, all your pieces will be even. Okay, that one is not very even, but it's okay. Let me put some more. It's a little messy. But not too much, and you get it all over the place. And it does, always remember this, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. But it has to be 100% delicious. is going everywhere but that's the way the cookie crumbles okay I think we're gonna need a little bit more of paste let's see have you realized what I'm gonna do probably not 
Okay, now watch what we're going to do. Now I'm sure you know what I'm doing. It's a web. Now this isn't hard at all, right? So do it like I said ahead of time for Halloween. And there it is, guys, your Chamber of Secrets Harry Potter cake, okay? And there it is, the wonder of the world. Okay, the first piece is missing because the cameraman ate it. Okay. And now gently, because this is very fresh, let me see how I'm going to do it. So I hope you enjoy it, this beautiful recipe. Make a birthday party for your kids and be sure that they will be very happy with it. And keep it in mind, for Halloween, I'm hoping